Well, today I've come out to Ban Patung. Uh, this is an area out in San Kampeng. I have brought you to before. Um, it's it's fascinating because you know there's some history here, but you don't know what all the history is because it's so hard to find the details. Uh, I'm sure if I was a Thai person, I could investigate and investigate and investigate, but I'm not. And I do my best to, you know, unpick and discover something of interest to bring you. Well, this is a well which has been uh, respected and worshipped for many, many years. It's a reservoir at the top there. That's where the man's cutting the grass at the top. But you have here a well. It's a, a natural spring and it's well respected in this area. So this is the very important well. It's got some beautiful clear water. The gentleman's just been filling his bottle of water and he's been scooping the water into his bottle to take away with him. And I'll give you an interpretation of what this sign says in a moment. But you can see this water, it's so beautiful and clear, gorgeous. Well, there's a huge toad there. He's been trying to get my attention. He's been moving around here. Well, the sign that's here is saying, uh, women with a menstruation do not bring water. So I'm quite fortunate I am not menstruating. There are no women around here. So that's a very fortunate thing too. And I have not seen any women menstruating either uh, in this area on the way here. Now there's some information on this board here. I've just done a, a Google Translate of this. And in the pond is a very special eel. It's a golden species of eel believed to only live in this area. I'll leave the uh, translated image uh, here in this video, you'll see it. Uh, it's talking about the, uh, the discovery of this well and the importance of this well and the discovery of the, this eel here. Many years ago I was here and it was just totally overgrown. You'd never have recognized that there was something here of interest. So, you know, it's, it's cyclical, isn't it? Whereby things are of interest for attraction, for tourism, uh, for culture. People appreciate what they've got more and then it wanes because people move on or money drifts or what, whatever these reasons are. Things change. Well, right now, this is appealing to people to come and visit, uh, to come and visit this historic place. There's not a lot of information about, but there's some nice things to see. I believe when I came here last, there was a, a little bit of a bridge and a brickwork and waterfall that used to come down here. Yeah, it's a bit dry by the look of it. And up here on the top, you can see there's a bit of a waterfall that comes down here and then there's this waterway that goes down into this in, this pond at the bottom so uh, at the moment the pipe that goes up there to pump the water down as an attraction <laughs> the attraction's not working today it's a nice day for a flight i'm going to take you up and uh, show you the reservoir up the top i'm not going to walk up i'm going to fly up and uh, fly a little bit over the bit of the valley here
nicely acknowledging the existence of this ancient kiln once again. Uh, a couple of years ago, this was just wiped out completely, uh, not just from uh, rotting wood, but um, also the, the forest just decayed this place. And now they've erected a nice wall with a nice new sign. Now, I think if I remember rightly, this goes back about 800 years. And there's bit, you know, bits of pottery here and there that you can see collected in the temple down the road. And I came out here hmm, two months ago. I'll leave a link above to the video. We went to a temple uh, to do a tambun and we went into a little museum. And uh, following that trip to the museum, uh, we, we got a temple tour by the monk. The monk took us to uh, two or three temples uh, to give us a guided tour. It's very nice of him. And in the end, he sat and drank uh, iced tea uh, at a coffee shop that we took him to. But uh, this is the ancient kiln that's referred to uh, by the text that we saw, or one of the ancient kilns that uh, referred to in the text that we saw at that temple in that museum. I think it's a nice place to come and visit. I think it's a nice uh, place to respect that here was, uh, you know, pottery processing uh, activity around the kiln 800 years ago. I, I, I think it's nice to come to a place like this and, and pay respect to it and say, this is part of his history. To ignore it, to just accept it that it exists oh, somewhere out there in San Kampeng, there's something that went on, I, I, I think is, um, you, you know, you're missing part of the, the beauty of this place. If you don't go and find it and actually see it for yourself. I, th I think we're not enjoying the country as much as we should. That flight that I took up uh, there just now, you saw all that burning going on. Uh, there's plenty of uh, cutting of uh, orchards and cutting of old uh, harvest, uh, the stubble, and they're burning all that away. And that's what's putting that haze in the air. And you'll see that layer uh, whereby just above the ground on occasions you'll see this strip of mucky air and then above that you'll see the white clouds and then above that you'll see the blue skies. Well that, uh, that bad looking air that will increase in its uh, colour, uh, it'll go darker uh, and it will just sit there now for the next couple of months and then our API will start to increase. It's already up uh, 40 to 50, so uh, it's gone from single figures a month ago to uh, you know, 40 to 50. Now, it's about to go amber, and therefore currently it's still healthy, but it's about to go amber, and at times uh, you look at the indicator on your, your meter that you have at home if you've got one, and you'll see it changing uh, over the next few weeks with the burning that's going on. Wind comes, blows it away, and it gets better again. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go off down the road and show you a bit more. Wow, he's attended by many maidens. Well, this is Mun Dabroan. Uh, he was the uh, lord of this area. And in the, the temple down the way, uh, in the museum, there is a lot of uh, information about the area, but a little bit about this man. Uh, there's a text that's actually uh, been translated and you can see it there in the museum that talks about the power this uh, gentleman was given. There was a lot of trading using shells as currency. There was, um, I forget the name of them now, I have to find out what... I'll leave a link above to, to that video and you'll see the detail of that uh, plaque that talks about uh, Mun Dabroan. And round the back here is another spring, another well. There's lots of cobwebs here too. Oh dear, cobwebs everywhere. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, cobwebs everywhere. So, a little bit of history out here in Sangampeng. Unexpected, because I just wanted to come here and have a coffee down the road. But um, I thought I'd go for a, 
I'll wander up here and show you some of the interesting things that I wanted to bring to you. Hope you found that interesting. See you in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.